Hello, everybody. This is Duke White uh, with Child of God Ministries Incorporated, News Media One, Current FM, uh, and coming soon, Jesus.org. Um, I wanted to take time to talk to you about uh, the body of Christ, uh, the responsibility of the body of Christ, and also uh, media. And we have already in progress, already in motion, uh, to have major corporations uh, s supporting us because of our partnership with Sinclair Media and the television broadcast that we already have in production and already rolling. It's actually already televised uh, on uh, MyTVZ. Because of this relationship, it's opened doors for us to get major uh, corporate uh, sponsorship and advertising, marketing. Uh, and so uh, I, I, this it opened the door for a very huge historical opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. And uh, because of that, I had to take a time to have a serious conversation with the body of Christ because everything that I do, I do it for the kingdom of God and, and the glory of the Father. And because of that, uh, I've tried other things in the past that really needed the body of Christ to respond, and it would always be to no avail. It, it would not uh, be successful, not because it wasn't a good idea, not because of uh, any other reason, maybe even because of my own personality and uh, that I'm a brute beast, like a barbarian. It's true. Uh, but Nevertheless, the Father keeps opening up opportunities for uh, the, the, the body of Christ. And uh, I want to share um, not just my heart, but I want to share what the, the Creator has been showing me with you all about building platforms. First of all, I want to say thank you to all the men and women of God out there who have dedicated their lives to ministry, the authors out there, the musicians out there, the entrepreneurs out there who have built businesses and invested their own money, uh, invested their sweat, blood, and tears, and their youthfulness for years. I, I'm, I'm 41 years old, and I... Uh, I know what it feels like. I dedicated my entire 20s, my entire 30s, uh, and, 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 and missed opportunities in the secular world to, to do these things because I wanted to serve the kingdom of God, and I, and I love the people of God. And it is with that same momentum, it is that same intensity that I have to have this candid conversation with the body of Christ. And that is, uh, we have missed entirely too many opportunities to influence a generation. And then we'll turn around and be the same people talking about how lost the generation is. We will look at our youth as a, either a concept to get adults into the church so they can give money or, uh, or, you know, or will we, we, or they're an afterthought. Uh, we have allowed you know, people with low morality, low morale, and, and uh, people with low intellect. Honestly, a lot of them have low intellect. And they also have wicked hearts and manipulate. Some of them are highly intelligent, but they have wicked hearts. Uh, and they had to find success through corruption. Uh, much like a shady preacher, a lot of these uh, people of influence, these influencers are very evil, very greedy. They don't care. They've made it by themselves their entire life. And so or they neglected the people that they needed and so what ends up happening is that their influence of do whatever it takes to be successful dominates our young people even to the point of dividing um, our own families now here's the problem with that the problem is that we are the children of light and we're supposed to be leading the people in influence. Instead, we let a bunch of morons and idiots and fools, uh, uh, and I'm not being condemning or judgmental. They're just stupid people. We let stupid people lead the way and influence our children and take our children away from uh, purpose, away from life. And I want to give you an example of what I'm talking about. In the early 70s, when cable television came out with HBO, one of the things that kind of guarded the hearts of our young people, even though they were on the the, the uh, you know emotional roller coaster of their parents coming home from Vietnam and parents coming being affected by World War II and we, we never un really understand how the uh, we, we might look at things compartmentalized like this is history but really there's it's a momentum and so the momentum of our country has absolutely created our culture the opportunities that we took advantage of and the opportunities that we've missed they all created our culture the good the bad the ugly has created our culture. And so 
even though war and all these things, racism, all this stuff affected each and every one of us differently and our culture differently, one thing has always been true, that entertainment brought people together, people from all walks of life. Music brought people together. The NFL brought people together. This is one of the main reasons why these same entities try to stay away from as many social issues as possible because they know that if they take a side, then they lose an audience. Well, being part of the body of Christ, Christ, that, that was part of the mission, that we will miss an audience. There will be people that don't listen. There will be people that don't follow. There will be people that don't get it, and there will be persecution for the sake of the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, the body of Christ has turned on itself and has become, uh, we've become a generation of uh, people pleasers, a generation of people that say whatever needs to be said to make people happy. Uh, we've lost the power of influence. You see, when someone hits rock bottom, they get to a point where they don't want someone to just be a yes man, no matter how much money they have, no matter how famous they are, that brokenness in their spirit begins something that haunts them and, and uh, they, they want a real experience with life itself. And that's when those people would often look to the body of Christ. And they are often disappointed when they see that the body of Christ not only acts like them, not only manipulates like them, not only is corrupt like some of the businesses in corporate America, but is actually worse. As Christ said it to the Pharisees, he said, you are making people uh, twice as bad, twice the sons of hell that they already are. This means society, mankind will already oppress itself into a level of disappointment and despair. And when the people of God do the will of God or try to manipulate the kingdom of God, that it actually makes things worse. And I want to say that our modern culture is not an effect of politics. Our modern culture is not an effect of racism and police brutality. Our modern culture is decaying and falling apart because of the lack of pursuit from the people of God. Uh, there was a time when there was no internet, when there was no cable television, uh, where people would find their way to the house of God. But then that time changed when people found out how to communicate in a massive way through radio and television. And the, the body of Christ used to be a big part of that. But we neglected to see the intensity and the effort that the entertainment industry was willing to develop to get our people's attention, to get our children's attention. In the last four decades, uh, we have watched the demise of just human culture, uh, the, the, the human decency, human morality, uh, and why? For the sake of entertainment. Who has led our children astray? I can tell you who. They actually have music videos. They, there's actually movies that did it, uh, that have altered people's lives. We miss opportunities to stand up and not just tell people how bad they are. That's not what this is about. But to show that the body of Christ is not only just as creative, but more creative. For every little Wayne, we have an Andy Minio and a little Lecrae and a you know, for, for, for every poison, we have a skillet. These are names you probably don't even know. We, we have amazing bands like Emory. Uh, we have radio stations like Current FM that plays the best of Christian rock, uh, kingdom music. This, this is about developing culture. And the body of Christ will just leave people hanging and miss opportunities. Uh, in the movies, if, you, if, you're, if you're 40 years old, you've probably watched a ton of movies. Uh, you've seen movies from the 70s, 80s. 90s and even the new age movies, which kind of suck. Uh, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. That's just opinion. But my point is, because like now it's just a bunch of remakes and stuff, but <laughs> but I get it, technology and everything. But again, uh, the secular world is willing to pay for people's attention. They're willing to pay to make sure that people are focused on them, where the body of Christ always tries to approach uh, corporate America or, or even the media with, with begging and, you know, please. And, and the reputation of the body of Christ in business is not good. The reputation of the body of Christ, when people see uh, the kingdom of God or any people of faith, they go running away. They would rather work with nonprofits that have nothing to do with faith-based issues because of the fact 
life that pastors won't pay bills because the pastors will make, they'll say they have a vision and they'll make these promises to pay and promises to do this and that. And they won't pay people because the, the people at their church didn't give. Well, it's like if the, just because the people at the church didn't give does not give you a right to not have integrity and not pay people. And so what ends up happening is there's this 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 uh, this constant battle. Should we? Should, this is what the business world does. Should we be involved with people of faith? And 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 not only so now not only are we failing in all levels of influence, we have the nerve to take pride in the fact that we have these big churches and small churches and and people come to church just because we exist does not mean we're doing it right. And I'm not here to beat up on the body of Christ. I'm not here to beat up on the church. I'm here to say after 400 years as a culture, 275 years as America, the body of Christ needs a wake up call and we need to correct the errors that we have. We have media that we have to invest in. If you are a pastor, you need to be invested in some form of Christian media, not just something that is affecting you. You need to be making sure that a portion of what you do is going towards uh, the creative of arts. We've got to get the arts, the businesses, and the ministries working together. If you want to know how LA became LA and how the, all the businesses work with the creative arts, and that's why they have so much influence over your children. That's why they can tell your children how to dress. That's the reason why your children are walking away from God. That's the reason why your children don't want to be like you. They want to be like these idiots that are on TV. Now, a lot of them are not idiots because they want to be, okay? A lot of them, it's fame and fortune was the only way that they could knew, knew, knew to get away from the pain and the hurt, okay? And so I know that a lot of celebrities are going to watch this video because I'm going to send it to them. And so I want to send a message to the celebrities as well uh, that we are not here to attack you. We are not here to tell you how bad you are. Uh, we're not here to tell you how stupid you are. You're already full aware of that. What we're here to do is to show you a better way. There are artists out there that have, they make better music. There are movies out there that are better than the filth that has been, to, to all the directors out there, this includes you. There's a, there are better movies out there, better concepts out there to show what life is really about without degrading people and without sending messages of negativity uh, that destroy people's lives. Because once people attach to their idea of your vision, which is where television comes from, once people attach their idea, now it's almost like your vision becomes alive in somebody else, and that's called an infection. You're infecting people with your vision. To, and, and so uh, here's the issue, is that we all know that the body of Christ and in, anything that doesn't have sex, drugs, and violence in it is immediately blocked out, okay? Is immediately blocked out. And, and, and part of the reason why is because sex, drugs, and violence is a easy sell. It easily uh, presents itself to the flesh and stimulates the flesh. The reason why a lot of uh, faith-based media doesn't work is because it's missing something. What is it missing? That stimulation to the flesh. It doesn't get inspired, and you, so you, you feel like something's missing. Here's where the situation has to come into play. Believers, faith-based people have to make more realistic movies, make better movies, make better music, all of that stuff. However, it doesn't mean that better is not always av already available. A lot of the industries out there won't support uh, faith-based music because why would they support something that's going to battle them on one side when when believers are already compromised? Believers are, they're already getting, they're not going to, the media, the secular media is not going to change because they already get the money from faith-based people. What happens, I remember when uh, Deaf Comedy Jam came out. When Deaf Comedy Jam came out, it was phenomenal. The amount of comedians that came out and we were laughing and things like that. We didn't get that from faith-based community. So a lot of our most, especially if you're 40 and above, a lot of our most intimate moments are not with church and doing church stuff. It's with the secular world doing worldly stuff. That's what we call being normal. That's what we call being people. Not being like God. That, that was more like work. That was the boring stuff. What made us laugh? What brought us joy? What, what made us feel like we were cool? Cool. What was it to be cool? It was being rebellious, being everything that we were going to wish we were not when we got older. 
And this influence has gone on since the early 70s, maybe even since the 60s. You know, the, the amount of corruption, it, it went from one thing to now we have people freely you know, twerking on the internet, wanting to be drug dealers, people aiming at being drug dealers, people aiming at, you can blame crack cocaine, you can blame this and that, but the truth of the matter is, we let the wrong people influence us, and we let people influence us who didn't know how to lead us. We abandoned God, and then kept the church. We abandoned Christ, but kept the church and pastors like actors begin to step into roles of what they thought pastoring was and stop caring for the people. I'd like to ask you a question. How are you a great pastor just because people give to you? To me, a great pastor would be a person that gives greatly to others, not just how people give to you. That's not the sign of a pastor. A pastor is someone who cares for his flock, takes care of his people. And I'm not trying to call people out, but I am saying that there's been too many pats on the back for a generation that has been falling apart. Racial tension growing high like never before, but the consistency of groups like Black Lives Matter, they've been hitting the streets, doing things that the body of Christ should have been doing 40 years ago. Instead, we sit 40 years behind in technology, 40 years behind in influence, 40 years behind in just about every realm of reality. And we're constantly begging people for money. Uh, that's what most churches do is beg people. They make it seem like it's holy, but they're just begging people for money. And here's the situation. We want authority. The body of Christ wants authority in people's lives, including our children, but very minimum investment. And this is a problem. Those influences that our children attach to, they're sending the body of Christ a message. Our own children, they're saying, I feel more connected to them than I feel to you, mom, to you, dad. I feel more connected to people that don't think like you, mom, that don't think like you, dad, that don't think like you, pastor. I'd rather be with them than be with you. And it's not just to be cool. A lot of the reason why is because they watch the opulence. They watch people pr produce a product that, sh that makes them feel like they care. Now you could say, well, I disagree. Well, that's because you're not listening and you're already offended. You're letting your offense interpret what I'm saying. And I'm asking you not to do that. Be smarter than that. Control yourself. Be disciplined. Stop being a punk. Here's the situation, all right? You've got to understand something, that, that our, our, we're losing America because of negative influences. And this is a war of influence. We have got to empower entrepreneurs. We, the body of Christ, have to empower the ministries. We, the body of Christ, has to empower the artists. And now here's one thing i got to be honest with you about. The majority of ignorance itself is coming from the churches and the amount of false doctrine that's being preached in the church. Not every church. There are very few churches that actually are preaching from the, the true Hebrew text. And I know some of you are dismissive about the origin and things like that. And the only reason why is because you're just dismissive in nature and you feel like you've already learned enough so you connect to, to a spirit, but it's not necessarily the spirit because the scriptures clearly tell us that we will know uh, our, our brothers and sisters by their by the love for each other and their love for for the truth. And, and anytime you can become dismissive with the truth, then it's because of the fact that you are dismissive with God. And yet you see yourself as an authority figure and you try to share that dismissiveness. And that's the real spirit that's being pushed out is your dismissiveness, not actually uh, the power of God. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. We have an opportunity uh, through stir.com to be empowered by corporate America. Corporate America right now is seeing the devastation that's going across America. And they're saying, hey, this is, this is the honest God truth. A lot of businesses are like, we don't want to get involved with anything faith-based. We just, how do we correct this situation? Right now, uh, by working with our company, the huge opportunity for, and there's so many wonderful men and women of God out there who have written books, but don't get support, who have written great music, but don't get support, who have made great movies, but don't get support. And the reason why is because the body of Christ is divided ministry, business, and arts, and they all try to survive on their own when that's not how this thing works. The ministry and businesses have to work together with the arts, the arts ministry, and we've got to stop being afraid of letting people's creative ability and gifts from God intimidate the church because the pastor may, the, the, the artist may become more famous than the pastor. So what? 
You know what I mean? This is, this is what the issue is. We've got so many mixed principles that are clouding our real purpose and judgment, and we're becoming completely non-effective. When Jay-Z makes an album, Jay makes, it makes, he, he makes an album knowing what it's, gonna, what it's gonna do. When a director makes a movie, they, make, they know what it's gonna do. When people make pornography, when people make death metal, they know what it's gonna do. But when a believer, often this happens, when a believer says, I wanna be a rapper, He's got to battle the church. He's got to battle mom and dad. He's got to battle because because we don't respect creativity in a lot of cases. And you want to know what ends up happening that's really sad? You'll watch secular artists start off in the church and then they'll get frustrated, go into the world, go go into they they had the influence, they were there. Then they, because the church doesn't pay people for their creativity, the church doesn't pay people for their business ideas. They don't partner. All they want to do is just beg, 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 beg. The church is really annoying. You know what I mean? It's just like this like this bug that just keeps flying around. It's really annoying because it's always just begging. We need empowered churches, empowered entrepreneurs, empowered businesses, and empowered artists. And the way that happens is by working together. Your network creates your net worth. Okay. Your network creates your net worth. And here's what happens. A lot of believers will leave the church, take the influence into the world Allow the world to influence them and the world will benefit from their anointing. Okay, so we'll watch the secular world influence, you know, people that come out of the very power of God and, and, and anointed by the very power of God. We'll watch people from the world influence our young people, generations, this has been going on for generations, and then they become dedicated to the world because the world pays them. The world takes care, even though they end up dying from suicide or alcoholism or drugs or this and that. I am 100% confident that the body of Christ is more powerful than the secular world. But we have squandered and neglected too many opportunities. And now it's time, because the world has broken itself, this is a perfect time to work together. Now I had to get the ball rolling in secret because of the amount of backstabbing, uh, heartless opportunist uh, that exists out there. And you know, a nation of Judases, there's churches of Judases, there's opportunists that will steal your ideas and things like that and self-sabotage, uh, trying to do what they're not anointed to do. This is why a lot of pastors don't really like birthing other pastors because pastors always try to take over and start church splits and this and that uh, because of the amount of stupid people that are out there who are undisciplined and undiscipled. But again, I digress. I had to do a lot of things in private, but the, all through these years, I've also been testing the hearts of the body of Christ. Now, many of you are going to want to argue and talk about what your church does that's so great. Well, then if it does, I don't, I don't know about it, which is a problem because I don't know anybody from Hollywood and I know everything that's happening there. So that's just a stupid point to bring up. So don't try to combat what I'm saying and really understand what I'm saying is that when it comes down to who is winning an influence over the last 40 years, it is not the body of Christ. It is the secular world, the secular world. And when I say secular, I want you to understand something. Don't be all, you go from the religious to the super intellectual where you're like, oh, the secular and the sacred. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay, listen to what I'm saying. What I'm talking about is effectiveness. Who is being more effective? The people who choose not to bring God into anything and just work off their work ethic and human need like sex and you know violence and stimulation and things like that. They're just profiting off of that. You know, off, off the five senses, profiting off of that. The body of Christ has a dimension that they don't have, and that is the spirit. And if we get back to living according to the spirit, if we get back to empowering and unity and family, a lot of these people are angry with the body of Christ because we promote family, but we don't do anything for families. We have the ability to keep families together. We have the ability to build orphanages. We have the ability to inspire, to influence, and to lead. We have the ability to inform, but we're wasting all of our ability just to have church. And it's that reason, that one dimension that they don't even realize they don't even have. They don't appreciate. They don't appreciate it because they don't know what's there. So now atheists, their influence is growing. Evil and wickedness, that influence is corruption is growing. 
Now, some of you are going to say I sound real self-righteous. Uh, and and here, I want you to know something. Let me explain to you why you're an idiot. Okay, you're an idiot because of the fact that instead of hearing that we have already in motion the opportunity to win the influence back, you're hearing your own pride and your own self-righteousness trying to project it onto me because you think you do so much and your church has such an influence. I've already asked. You know what happens when I go around and ask people if they know you and know your ministry and know this and that? They don't. They don't. Most people don't know who you are because your work ethic sucks. You're so focused on making sure everything else in your life goes well and you give God what's left. Or you give God everything you think you have, but you don't really let him surface what he really has for you. So you give God what you've made do with and the best of that. And you pride yourself off that. I want you to understand why I'm the way I am. Because I'm a warrior. And I know the generation that I was sent to. And I know that I come from heaven. I know my purpose. I'm not confused about who I am and what my job is and what I'm supposed to do. You may be, but I'm not. And I'm asking everybody right now for us to finally get on one accord and let's start building kingdom culture. There are systems already in place, programs already in place, connections already in place. All we need to do is connect the right people to it. And I'm asking everybody to not try to take over, you know, but let's impart into one another. Now, if you try to make this about money, I want to explain something to you. There is money involved. People are going to be employed. People are going to get paid. Uh, you know, and we're, but we're going to build this thing together. And everyone's going to, we're going to build this kingdom together. And it's going to be off truth. It's going to be off righteousness. It's going to be off love. It's going to be off integrity. And, and, and this is why you guys are going to see a different side of me. I, I don't really care about what you did in the past. I care about who you are right now. And many of you don't like me. And, and the cool part about it is, is I don't like many of you. You know what I mean? But we got a job to do. I didn't like a lot of people in the military, but we got a job to do. This is not about being friendly and all this other stuff. This is about us completing the mission. Right now, we have a huge opportunity. Listen, people, the, the government has failed us both Democratic and Republican. The media has failed us. Both Fox and CNN, the liberal media, social media has failed us. This is an opportunity for kingdom media. We've given everybody over the last 40 years an opportunity to entertain and influence our children and this and that. What would happen if those table, tables were turned and we allowed the sons and daughters the, the ability to influence now, when I look on Facebook, I see a bunch of preachers preaching a bunch of weird stuff, and they just, they just want to be in front of a camera and all this other stuff, and they're preaching, preaching a bunch of nonsense and stuff that they were preached to. But imagine a real opportunity to discover our true history, other than the History Channel, which is this edited version of you know, ridiculousness and ancient aliens, which is a great show, great show, I love it. Uh, but but it's, it's definitely a lot of outlandish stuff because they don't want to pay attention to the real things of God. My point is simply this. What are we going to do? Are we going to keep waiting for the secular media or the those that, and some people don't want to hear secular, but we keep waiting for someone to throw us a bone? You know, we talk about Lecrae all the time. Lecrae gets on my nerves sometimes, but I want to explain something to you. He's out there by himself. Would there be a Kanye being doing crazy stuff if the body of Christ was in charge of the music business? If the, if the body of Christ was in charge of the, the if there was a, a, a place for creative people to go in the kingdom of God, would there be a Jay-Z if they knew that their, his neighborhood never was flooded with drugs because there was so much love in the body of Christ and so many people that stepped in? How, what, what, would there be a little Wayne? Would there be a young Yachty or whoever, uh, P. Diddy and all of these other stuff, if the body of Christ was doing its job? Would these, these entities that have influenced us and become... The these media moguls and now influences, influences, and we're still talking about Pac and Biggie. We're still talking about that. Would that be here if the men and women of God were to rise up? We've got to support uh, Current FM.
We've got to support what we're doing here at Child of God Ministries Incorporated, uh, which is a for-profit organization, not a non-profit, because we ain't begging nobody for nothing, and we're not letting nobody tell us what to do. This is the reason why I operate the way I do. Also, uh, we empower ministries. We we do what we do so we can empower you. So I definitely want to encourage you all to get a Coming Soon Jesus shirt. You know, we're going to be uh, leaving the mall soon. We're in Lynn Haven Mall. Uh, that idea is dead in the water, but it birthed this opportunity, this wonderful opportunity opportunity. And, and everything I'm saying is not something that could happen. It's already happening. We have a television show, Real Life with Duke White, Duke, Duke White already on air. And so, uh, you know, please check it out. It's on my TVZ, which is how the it kind of like snowballed into us owning our own television station, uh, two television stations. One is 24-hour news, where it's real news. Uh, we get to talk about things that we see, uh, so it's real news, and we get to talk about things that we see. And then, of course, there's KTV, which is kingdom television, which talks about the, the culture of God, how, how we live, family life, uh, real estate, business, ministry, uh, music. It's a very heavily involved with music because that's such a culture builder. Uh, I'm not going to take you any more of your time. If you have any more questions for me, if you have any questions or you want to connect, this is the opportunity. But I'm letting you know right now, no nonsense, no stupidity. If you're not trying to bring something to the table, stay back. Don't come to the party. Uh, if you're trying to make things complicated, if you're a complicated, ignorant person, this is not for you. But if you are somebody that genuinely wants to make a difference, if you've written a book, if you have a high work ethic, but if, and by the way, if you're trying to use, if you're going to try to use this platform just so you can get something for free. Not going to happen. Everybody has to play a part and everybody has to make sacrifice because this is too big. We're talking about nationwide exposure. You could have written a book five years ago. It's about get, to get nationwide guaranteed exposure. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to let you guys know right off the bat, this is going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and it has the ability to reach millions and millions of people like never before. We've watched Vince McMahon from WWE uh, influence millions of people for the last 50 years. We've watched the NFL influence millions, and they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we're not even doing anything that, that, that hasn't already been done before. But if we stop being fans of the world, and start focusing on who God created us to be and, and stop allowing the things that are not of God to impress us to the point where we throw away our own dreams and goals and purpose. And the only way we feel like we can be successful is to give into their way. If we say, no, we're going to build our own from the ground up and we have a multi-billion dollar company behind us, working with us, partnering with us, and we have the opportunity to have creative control, we can't afford to miss this opportunity. So if you want to contact me, contact me at info at coming soon Jesus.org or call me at 1-844-937-4821. We have one shot.